Hello and welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul, Justin Baker, co-host, ready to roll on the worst depth at right wing, uh, as as it were, for each team throughout the National Hockey League. I don't know why I haven't figured out a better way to say uh, our worst depth series, but uh, if you haven't checked out the previous episodes, uh, we've done the center position, defense, that left wing side. Uh, here we're doing the right wing. Our next episode will be goaltending, and then we'll get into the prospects in the National Hockey League and the depth of prospects and in teams' minor league systems and what have you. Uh, those episodes are great. They're standalone. You're not going to hear a whole bunch of news that's outdated. You're just going to hear um, the the you know the individual position. So go back and listen to those. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, just hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this, and uh, that'll just you know that'll make our episodes show up more easily. And so, uh, thank you for listening, and let's dive right in to the right wing position. Uh, before we do that, I suppose Justin, you should say hello. Oh hi, <laughs> yeah, I am here. Mark's he's, not imagining it. He's here. Uh, yep, it's you know it's nice. I I'm actually saying both. I'm talking for both people. I've just adjusted the sound of the voice of the second person, so I'm really actually by myself. Very good ventriloquist. See, I'm amazing. <laughs> uh, somehow we're talking at the same time, too. It's fantastic. Yeah, so, okay, well, the way we've done this, uh, you know, some we don't necessarily use the exact same uh, sites to determine what positions guys are playing. I mean, you know, positions in hockey now are much more fluid than they once were, especially for this winger position. There's a lot of players. I mean, if you play fantasy hockey, you know there's a lot of LWRWs out there. Uh, there's a lot of, like, center left wing, center right wing. I'd say that there's there's not many center left wing right wingers. You know, there's there's a few out there. Nyquist, I think, is one of them. I think no, David not anymore. Perron, oh, he's not anymore. Nope. David Perron has been in the past... Uh, but I think that uh, this the winger position maybe is the most difficult to get a you know a read on who actually plays what position. But I think that some of what plays a, a factor is you know you do especially defensively you want guys playing on their correct wing. I mean unless a guy unless a guy is just an absolute sniper and they you know they're left handed like a Tarasenko uh, he's left handed but plays on the right side. And that's because that's the side that he prefers. He's going to score the most goals from there. Fair enough. Do your thing. And uh, that's and that's acceptable. But, you know, sometimes you're forced to play guys on the off wing just because that's what hand you have. And and uh, that just is what it is. But uh, we are going to do our best to assign guys to their proper spot and identify when a player is just playing out of his position and how that might affect the depth rankings. So with that said, Number five for you, Justin. Number five. Uh, Colorado Avalanche for me. Okay. Colorado yes. Avalanche. I know a lot of people are going to look at this, but they've got Miko Rantanen, right? Why would you even think about doing that? He's probably the, I mean, he is the top right winger when you look at scoring. But uh, unfortunately, when you go past him, there is nobody. Um, Colin Wilson. Well, Colin Wilson's not. I mean, too bad. Gabriel Bork. It's a little little lackluster is a good word for it. And I think um, if they had somebody who maybe you could consider a true number two right winger on this team, then yeah, they would be off this list for sure. But there's nobody, in my opinion, that is playing above third-ish, maybe fourth line minutes. and Or, I mean, in terms of ability on the right side for this team out, you know, when you get past Rotten. And so for me, that's why they came in at number five. See, I just have a hard time putting a team with the best right winger on the the worst depth because to me there are teams yeah they might have a, a little bit better players down the lineup but what he brings to the table outpaces and probably most teams two three and four that's my guess i mean that's fair but I, for me when i look at a team like you take them as an average right if maybe you say this guy's the 150th best right winger this guy's the hundredth right but he's number four so when you average it out it usually Everybody else below him is pulling that average so far down that to me it just you know that's where they fall at All that right. point. Okay. Uh, well, I have the Los Angeles Kings. I like. Well, I have them at number four. Okay. So uh, it is a little un, you know in Dustin Brown on that right side. Of course, he plays next to Anze Kopitar. He's not having a bad year. He had a great bounce back year last year. 
And uh, you might look at this and go, well, I mean, then Tyler Toffoli at right at the second line uh, isn't bad. Matt, Matt Luff, Sheldon Rempel, uh, not horrible players, really nothing that, uh, I mean, you look at the production of this team overall, a team with Kopitar, a team with Jeff Carter, a Drew Doughty, and this team still is where they are. Brutal. I mean, they're towards the bottom of the standings. And so, to me, that's a big reason is because they get no scoring from their bottom six. I mean, their bottom six may be the worst in the NHL. And Ouch. even maybe even their like the bottom nine outside that top top six. If you take Jeff Carter and replace him with Alex Iafalo, I mean, this might be the worst bottom nine in the in the league. So Yeah, and that is with a hurt Kovalchuk and Haglin out of the lineup right now. Right, right. So get them back but, healthy. Maybe that changes. But Kovalchuk but. is, I mean, both those guys They're are on the left players. side, yeah. right? So, yeah, it's this team just not much going for them right now. And uh, don't like their left side because I think their left side is actually inflated because of who they have at center. They got some good centers. Two lines. So, yeah. I have the Kings at five. You have them at four. Uh, and You're so number four. My number four is the New York Rangers. Ooh. Uh, I have the New York Rangers here. You've got Jesper Faust as, uh, right now playing as on that top line with Jimmy VC and Zabinijad, and then Philip Scheidel with Kevin Hayes and Chris Kreider. And you've got Ryan Strom, who has really, we recognize that name because he was given some opportunities with McDavid, but really Ryan Strom has not worked out at all. He, he hasn't been good, and he continues to play at about that level for New York where he's nothing more than maybe a, a fourth line winger, third line winger, and uh, then Stephen Fogarty. And I, I just, I don't like their, uh, yeah, that right side at all. And I think despite some of their, so they have had some success this season, uh, but it really has more been this team, total team success. Uh, they've been playing well together, but this right side to me is very weak. And when you compare, especially... You know, we went through the left side. There were quite a few teams that were weak on the left side. Uh, the left side doesn't seem to have, doesn't attract the same amount of snipers as that right side. And so it, there's a lot of teams with at least one good right winger. And to me, this is one of the few teams without any good right winger. Okay. That's fair. At least a high-end right winger. Yeah. Not not to say that Jesper Fast can't be a, an effective player, but he's on the top line. He most certainly is not. That is fair. Uh, okay, so you're number three. At number three, I have the Arizona Coyotes. Um, a team, when you look at it, yes, Clayton Keller on that right side. Funny enough, uh, NHL.com has him listed as a center, which is weird to me um, because he is not a center. Mm, definitely not a center. Nope. Uh, yeah. but and, and playing alongside Nick Schmaltz now, too. Yeah. Uh, change of pace. They move Galchenyuk off the center, back to the wing now. So. I, I think that's that's it. Like Galchenyuk, he's a winger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's nothing more than a winger. <laughs> At this point, yeah, you just got to. So outside of Clayton Keller, I mean, you go a little bit further down, you got Christian Fisher, um, you know, Richard Ponick, maybe you could throw him on the right winger, Archibald, guys that are just not very flashy, guys that don't really produce much. I'm still, I know Arizona long-term thinks Christian Fisher, Fisher is going to work out and be just a phenomenal right, player. Right. I'm not on board Sign with that. that. Good deal. Yeah, I, I don't believe he's going to be that guy. Um, I don't think he's anything better than a third line guy, maybe a fill in at number two, your number two line. But uh, Clayton Keller, good. I like him. But outside of that, there's really nothing to get me excited about. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Phoenix or Arizona did not make my list. Did not. Okay. So uh, my third is the St. Louis Blues. Now, you might think. How could he put the St. Louis Blues so high with Vladimir Tarasenko on the right side? And, uh, of course, you know, I I said, you know, how can you put Miko Rantanen and the Colorado Avalanche on this list with Miko Rantanen on there? Uh, for which, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fair point. Uh, David Perron also playing on that right side, which is hey, a 60-point getter from last year on, right. the, on that right how side. How dare you? How can you put them on there? And to me, so David Perron, to me, is playing out of position. Most of his career, he's been a left winger or a center. Uh, he has played the right side. I believe he played the right side early in his career, but he's mostly played the center left side. I think he's just over there because they don't have much on the right side. Uh, and Tarasenko, I mean, yes, he, he has he is the one guy, yeah, he's a left-hander playing on the right side because he can. he's a sniper. Uh, 
I, w- I would venture to say that Tarasenko has struggled this year, and perhaps a move to the left side would favor him. Uh, because defensively he can be better. You can be better on your on the correct wing, and maybe it would create some different types of opportunities for him. You can always put him on the power play on the right side, but to me, I think Mike Babcock's got it right. He likes to play guys on their correct wing, and it, it has worked out pretty well. Uh, I think when you know when you play a guy on the on the correct side, it, it can it can make a difference. Um, Tarasenko obviously just not really gelling with Ryan O'Reilly. I I feel like although eh, they have they haven't been awful, but yeah, this Blues team has a lot of players playing out of position, and I think that that is maybe some of the reason for their down downturn. Okay, yeah, I mean, hey, I I won't disagree with that. I think. Um, you look at a guy like Alex Ovechkin, for example, when he got shifted from, you know, one side to the other, he lit it up. He, right. he went back to scoring like, like crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, they played him on the right side. Yeah. I remember that one year he was actually voted as a left wing and a right wing all star. Right. Yeah. That's just hysterical. But I mean, when you look at like, when you talk about being on your right side versus, you know, being on your opposite side, there's a reason they put defensemen right. They want a left-handed guy on the left and a right-handed guy on the right. Right. Because it, it works out better defensively for you. And you can, because you can take, you don't have to take that pass on your backhand. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 just, I know that there are guys that do it, but I think that uh, you, you can always, you know, you're in the offensive zone. You can always cross. You guys are, you know, you're not static to the one side of the ice. You can move. Uh, I, I would be curious to see what would happen if Tarasenko played the uh, the left side, but that's just me. Okay, so who's your who's your number three? Number two. Number two. Number two. Uh, a team you already mentioned at number four, the New York Rangers. Okay, so you've got them much higher. Yes, and mostly because of like what you said, they don't have a guy who is the guy on the right wing. They just have a bunch of fill-ins, a lot, a lot of third line fill-ins in there, just up and down the lineup. Um, Nothing where you look at one guy and you're like, oh man, he's 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 good. Like, no, nobody on that that right side makes me be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's of course it's fair. The New York Rangers are very open about the fact that they're not exactly trying to win, despite the fact that I think at one point they were first in the division. <laughs> right. Uh, I they yeah. are no longer there. They are just outside the playoffs now. Uh, and I my expectation is that they would most likely consider to continue to fall. But they are almost they're in that middling spot because of Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, he's playing it for sure. Oh, worldly. And it's what would be crazy to me is that for a hungry goal or a goalie hungry league right now, the return they could get out of him playing he's he's playing at an over nine twenty save I mean, percentage right if, now. Uh, you know, Philadelphia. What a what a great short term option. Philly for or Pittsburgh even. I mean I just don't think that they're gonna trade him. No, I don't I don't think, I think he, he wants he says he wants to stick around for the rebuild, but I mean, come on, if you I mean, this is like, he's one of those guys where you look at and you're like, he needs to win a cup before his career is over with. I was reading, was I reading or listening to some, an interview with uh, somebody who had worked with the New York Rangers and at a meeting they were asked like, Hey, you know, what are some ideas of what we can do with this team? Like no idea is too crazy. And you know, people are talking and, and he said, well, what if we trade Lungfist? And I guess the room just got quiet and <laughs> people are like, no, that's no. No, that's a bad idea. Okay. We're not trading Longquist. So I think that is still the the general consensus with the New York Rangers. They're not going to trade Longquist. He's a lifer, and sometimes I think you just respect you respect that. Oh, I sure, guess. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, th- I think they won't. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think they'll. No, trade if him. he asks, to right? Move, that's the thing. Move. Yeah, if he asks, they'll they'll let him do whatever he wants. Maybe they make it bad enough for him. I mean, they're ten four and one at home. He's the reason they're winning games I three mean, eight and two so. on the road though they're almost they're they're just like the devils except that the devils are last place in the east seven one and four at home but then ten two and one on the road that's that's just brutal uh okay so uh, we Your digress uh let's go uh with my number two the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks, a team not even on my list. A team not even on your list. I guess I failed. Yeah. Uh, so Jonas Donskoy as your your top right winger playing alongside Joe Pavelski and Evander Kane. Uh clearly the weak the weak side there. Uh, Donskoy, he can go into the corners. He tends to be a guy who can, uh, you know, he can put in your garbage goals for you. Uh, he He's fast enough to keep up with the two of them. Uh, and he's fine for your first line. Really not a standout, though. Uh, would be a lot of teams second or third 
right winger. And then you come down to Kevin LeBanc. LeBanc hasn't been a bad player for them. I think that he's he's been an unexpected He's come up and he's been able to play on that second line. But again, you're playing along Hurdle and, and Couture. And he, again, is the weak point of that line. Uh, then you go down to that third line. You've got Thornton and Sorensen and, and Melker Carlson. I think they expected Melker Carlson to be Carlson to be better earlier in his career. And uh, he's kind of that just he's a bottom six forward now. And then, yeah, He's still a pretty good player, though. He could surprise you. It's not that he doesn't have the ability to do something with the puck here and there, but uh, ultimately, when you look at this team's right side, it is, I mean, this is a pretty decent team. Uh, although, really outside of Joe Thornton in their bottom six, there's not a whole lot to be super pumped about. Uh, but they uh, their right side is definitely their weak side. If they were able to find somebody who can shoot, who shoots right and is a high-end player, I mean, this team would, would really change uh so yeah, also okay. Mel- Melker Carlson is listed as a defenseman on here. <laughs> Don't know. I think that's the wrong Carlson. <laughs> I, I, I think they meant the other Carlson. Yeah. <laughs> Daily faceoff, get on it. Okay, that's my number two, and your number one most likely is the same as me. Numero uno, the Edmonton Oilers. Just brutal on yes. the right side and the left side. Did and they win every the left side. side too. They did win the yeah. left side. Yes. Yeah. So not I mean, good for them. Alex Chase on right now playing alongside McDavid and Drysital. <laughs> Poyarvi, who hopefully can end up being something decent for them, who hasn't. And then you've got Cassian and Ty Ratty. Ty Ratty started on Connor McDavid's wing, and now he's playing on Patrick Russell and Juhar Kaira. Mm. Know how to pronounce his name. Tasty. Yeah, I just there's not a whole lot to say when it comes to the Oilers right now. No, and I think if you had to... I mean, so Dreisaitl is clearly a number two center, but he ends up playing right wing a lot because they don't have anybody to play wing. I mean, that's just how bad it is that they have to basically force centers to come up and play the wing because they just don't have the talent to play top six minutes on the wing for anybody. Or is it that Dreisaitl's not good enough to be alone on a line? Ooh, there we go. I mean, I know you don't like See, to me, I'm like, okay, Dreisaitl goes with Nugent Hopkins and then... You find someone who can come up and play on the left side. You maybe pull a Poyarvi up, and I don't know, McDavid. I mean, you look at some of the guys that early in Crosby's career that they stuck him with. I, I mean, I feel like he could do something with with most guys and just do it on his own. Oh, for sure. I mean, at this point, it's do you want Nugent Hopkins to do it on his own or Connor McDavid to do it on his it on its own? Right, so. and I I think that's why still I give the edge to Crosby for being the best player in the world because he makes other guys much much better where mcdavid really hasn't shown that too much yet right i i would agree yeah Yeah. Yeah, he hasn't they haven't found a player who can play at his speed and some of that was you know crosby in the in the beginning it was like yeah well we'll put another really skilled player with crosby well crosby wanted to play the down low cycle game and so that's why a guy like kunitz worked out so well a guy with a lot of talent but willing to go into the corners and was actually was just really good in tight spaces and that's why it worked so well with mcdavid you need somebody who can fly and that's why i think they're stuck with dry playing with them because he's the only one that can keep up on this team yeah and I, I will say if edmonton somehow manages to get into the playoffs i still don't know if that Peter Shirelli gets to keep his job now. I will say, if they do go out, he makes a big move to bring in a right winger who can produce, who can stay afloat with Connor McDavid on that top line, and they make the playoffs, yes, he might keep his job. All right. That's it yeah. to me. Yeah, they need to make a splash. I mean, there's it's hard to find high-end talent on the wing just to bring in who's young, but I don't know if they need to bring in a young guy. You maybe can just find... You know, uh, an older guy, even a rental at this point, would give this team some life. Uh, I know Ken Hitchcock has given them some life, but you know how long does how long does it last with Ken Hitchcock? Is it a ten game thing? Is it a fifty game thing? Is it enough to to get them over this this hump permanently, or is it just yeah maybe this season they end up playing his way, but then by next season it's right back to where it was because he isn't signed after this year. I, I mean he's quote unquote retired and he's coming out of retirement to help. You know, hey, maybe, maybe this is my, my one shot to turn around this team and, and uh, maybe impact Connor McDavid's career because that's a cool opportunity. But I don't think he's here beyond this year anyways. Yeah, I will say um, 
I was just looking at some names at the right wing and a guy who could be a really nice trade piece for this team and who I think could speed wise keep up and skill wise might be able to play well. Uh, Matt Zuccarello from the Rangers. Ah, I like that idea. So that's a good, that's a good thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and if you can put him on McDavid's wing and then take dry off of it and spread out some of that power, that would be, that would be ideal. Well, that is your, uh, the worst depth at right wing. That's uh, sorry, Edmonton. Sorry, yeah they've they've kind of gotten thrown under the bus there a little bit. You know it's funny because you look at the standings and you go, all right, well right now you've got teams like New Jersey and St. Louis and Chicago, Philadelphia, Florida, and none of those teams really made our lists. No, not really. So it's it's almost it's not necessarily like being on this list. You know when you think of the construction of a team, do you need to be really balanced? Or is it is it necessarily like you know? I guess that goes to the way that you draft. I mean, are you going to draft for because you need a right winger? Or are you going to draft? You have two really good centers, but the next best guy is a center who's available, and so do you take a center? You know, and just not worry about organizational structure in that way, where you go, we can always put a center on the wing. You can always put a center on the wing. You always could. That's that's never a problem. No. But yeah, when I it's. It's just it is interesting to look at look at the standings and and see how some of these teams really they they're okay at all positions they're just not great at any position and that is probably a much worse place to be right that when you can be great at one position it really can catapult your team upwards in the standings yeah. now I mean Edmonton is the best player in the world at least in terms of talent and speed and and it's still they're still two points out of a playoff spot. Uh, that seems like it may be turning around, winning three in a row, but uh, and and probably more by the time you're listening to this. And so, uh, it is a, an interesting, you know, way to way to think about forming a team, especially coming into this next year's draft. I mean, only one team gets Jack Hughes, and when you look at the depth of your team. You know, obviously, early on in the draft, it's really easy to go. Well, we're just going to take, we're going to take whoever is available, who's really good. Um, but you know what? Montreal didn't do that. Montreal said we need a center. We're going to pass on Zadina. We're going to pick Coke and Yemi. And thus far, it looks like it's going, it's working out. I mean, well, he made the team. Zadina say, didn't. One, yeah, one guy's playing, one guy's not. But is it that you know a? Obviously, Montreal saw something in him that others didn't because he was further down the list. Uh, were they picking truly? Like, did they truly believe that he was that much better than Zadina? Or did they go, yeah, Zadina might end up being a better player, but we think that Kokinyemi, in order to build a franchise, we need a center. This is what we're missing, and we've been missing it for so long that we have to pick this position. And, and so does, you know... Does it play? You know, we often hear you have to pick best player available. Yeah, I, I think when it comes down to like, if you got a couple guys that are pretty close on talent level, if you're not far above and beyond better than you know the other guy, you're gonna take whatever position you you need more. And I think you know clearly they needed a centerman more than anything else. Um, and I, I think next year you might see them even go after defenseman because that's just their where their needs gonna be more than anything else. You know, I mean sure. Detroit for instance, they needed. Defense really bad, but because they felt that Zadina was far better than any other defenseman, they took with with Zadina. I understood it with uh, Joe Valeno, who they picked. I think what were they thirtieth, right? Mm-hmm. I think there were some defensemen that were along the same level. Like I, Joe Valeno, he might be, he might, he might make the National Hockey League. He might not. I mean, right at the end of that first round, you're looking at probably a player who, in in terms of statistics, you've got what like maybe a thirty. 30% chance of making the NHL and playing more than 100 games. Sure. And so to me, if I'm in a position like that and I need defense, I'm picking defense. Because if I'm going 30% on any player, you know, I'm hoping that I get a defenseman because that's what I really need and it's harder to develop a defenseman. And so I mean there were some good defensemen taken in the end of the or the beginning of that second round too. And so I I think it'll be uh it'll be maybe regretful for Detroit. Even if even if Valeno ends up being good, if there's defensemen that end up being good too, I mean that's that's where you're going to be kicking yourself, going, well, we already have a lot of we have good forwards on this team. Oh sure, I mean Edmonton's already kicking themselves because Nail Yakupov, <laughs> they had good forwards too at the time, but yep, 
So and and Neil Yakupov was, you know, I I've read a lot about that. I mean, that draft was pretty pretty bad. bad. Yeah. Uh, was that the Morgan Riley draft? No. 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 Who? So yeah, because Neil Yakupov was went number one. But what I read was that the Oilers actually only had one scout in their like one top scout in their organization who had Yakupov at number one, and it was their Russian scout. Right. The rest of them had had him way down. I mean, some people had him as low as like seven, six. Now, I think the thing is, is that even if they, like, let's say that instead they picked Ryan Murray, who went second overall. Well, he didn't end up being anything. And if they had picked Griffin Reinhardt, it was Morgan Riley's draft, by the way. Yeah, um, it was. He went fifth overall. Uh, fifth overall, right. And uh, now Galchenyuk went number three. But you have Dumba and Lindholm. And Truba <laughs> went later later in the top ten, and so obviously things were mis misrepresented here because there there ended up being some really good defensemen. Brady Shea was taken late in the first round, and so there was some really good defensemen that they could have taken, and they went with Nail Yakupov. And I remember that uh, Ryan Burke was the GM of the Maple Leafs in this draft, and Morgan Riley had missed the full year before this draft due to an injury. And maybe he came back really late in the season or something like that. But uh, he said, if we had the first overall pick, we would have 100% taken Morgan Riley. He will be the best player in this draft when all is said and done. Now, uh, I think you could, Andre Vasilevsky, Philip Forsberg. I mean, there, there's there's some good names in this draft too, others that I have already listed off uh, that can be just as good as a Morgan Riley. But I, I don't see anybody on, on this list who... I'd say, oh, certainly they're going to have a way better career than Morgan Riley. I think he's right there with with the other top players in this draft. Yeah. Well, there you go. And somehow we went from worst depth at right winger to the 2012 draft. Edmonton gets me going. Edmonton gets me going. Well, uh, that is our show. I know it's a little bit shorter than normal, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we will... Get back with you next week. Justin, you have a uh, good time. At, Justin's in a Christmas production. A big a, Christmas a production. huge Christmas 33, production. 33,000 tickets sold. There you go. I mean, for and, 13 and shows or he's something. He's a drummer, so you're going to be on a, uh, a movable platform flipping you upside down or something, right? Yeah, we, uh, we rented Travis Barker's stage from California, shipped it out here, and it's, nice. it's flying. It's nice. going to be cool. Nice. Well, you'll have to, you can share on, our, on Twitter. You know, some a video. I'm sure yeah. that there'll be a video of it. Oh, I'm sure. Right? Yeah, so. a couple shows in, they'll probably let us start posting stuff. So. There you go. Cool. All right. Well, that's been our show. Tweet at us at OT Hockey Talk. Let us know how we did on that uh, worst right wing depth. If you think your team is the worst at right wing and we got it wrong, uh, feel free to tweet at us and let us know who you think the worst goaltending depth is in the NHL for our next show. And we will talk to you guys next week.